Hey everyone, it's Tyler, the Antenna Man, and today I'm going to review this Philips Indoor Antenna. It's a very simple set of rabbit ears, sort of like what was seen when television first came out. How well does it work? Stay tuned to find out. If you're a cord cutter or use an antenna, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. So back to this antenna, it has a very unique design. While it can be positioned to be set on top of a table or TV like this, it can also be set up to be hung on the wall like this. I think this is a good advantage as sometimes the best spot for reception may be somewhere on a wall or window where a regular set of rabbit ears may be hard to hang up. On the Amazon product page, there is a graphic that shows the antenna is next-gen TV capable. This is sort of misleading as any antenna will work with the new ATSC 3.0 next-gen TV standard. Just like with color antennas and HD antennas, the type of broadcast signal does not matter. What does matter is the frequencies and how the antenna is designed to pick them up. And with next-gen TV, the frequencies are not changing. This antenna is high VHF and UHF capable, which will work for most TV markets. The long elements here are optimized for high VHF channels 7 through 13, and the middle element here is optimized for UHF channels 14 and above. So how well does this antenna work? I tested it out in a new location with a bunch of other indoor antennas to see how it performs. If you decide to purchase this antenna, be sure to use one of my affiliate links in the pinned comment below or in the description of the video to help support my YouTube channel. Here are the stations I'll be testing out with this antenna, the RF channel they broadcast on, and the results of the last two antennas I tested out on the YouTube channel. There are three UHF channels and two VHF channels. The signal on WNEP, which broadcasts on UHF channel 21, was higher on this antenna than the last two indoor antennas I tested out. The signal on WYOU on VHF channel 12 was actually able to be picked up reliably on this cheap set of rabbit ears compared to the last two indoor antennas I tested out. WBRE on VHF channel 11 also was able to be picked up reliably with higher signal levels than the last two antennas I tested out. The signal on WOLF, which broadcasts on UHF channel 22, was, as you guessed it, higher on this antenna than the last two antennas I tested out. This antenna was actually able to pick up a tiny bit of the New Jersey PBS repeater on RF channel 27. Most antennas can't even lock in a pitcher on this channel. The performance of this antenna was really good for the price. Indoor antennas definitely have their limitations, but this was one of the best cheap indoor rabbit ear style antennas that I tested out. Its unique design allows you to try it in spots either on a table or a shelf, but can also be modified to be hung on a wall or window. This is definitely an indoor antenna worth trying out if you live within 20 or 30 miles of the broadcast towers with strong signals. Be sure to run a reception report on rabbitears.info or the FCC DTV reception maps to verify that you actually do have strong signals in your area before trying out an indoor antenna. Fair to weak signal areas will likely need an attic or outdoor antenna. If you decide to purchase this antenna, be sure to use one of my affiliate links in the pinned comment below or in the description of the video to help support my YouTube channel. With any indoor antenna, it's critical to use some kind of signal meter as a guide to find the best location for it. Moving an antenna as little as a few feet can have a huge impact on reception, which I demonstrated in a previous video of mine. If you plan on using an indoor antenna, I'd highly recommend either the Mediasonic or iView digital converter box. Both have a signal meter that comes up if you press the info button twice, which is very helpful to find the best spot for an indoor antenna. I include a link to both models along with an instructional video in the description of the video. I'll be releasing other indoor antenna reviews in the future, so be sure to stay tuned to my YouTube channel to see them. I was truly amazed at how well and how poor some performed. If you don't want to wait for the videos or would rather try an outdoor antenna the first time, feel free to sign up for an antenna recommendation from me on my website at antennamanpa.com. I'll eliminate all the guesswork and give you information on the best antenna for your location based on my experience testing out over 100 antenna models and actually installing them in four different TV markets. Thanks again for watching this YouTube video. 
An additional thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or is a member of my YouTube channel. If my videos have helped you cut the cord or improve your antenna reception and you'd like to help support them while gaining exclusive perks, such as behind the scenes content, access to my videos ad free one day early, and direct contact with me, visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man or click the join button in this video. If you're on Facebook, you can like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA. If you're not on Facebook and would like to receive email updates whenever I post new videos, feel free to sign up to my email list. I attach a link in the description of the video. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more cord cutting and antenna related videos and have an awesome day.